Today I'm going to be doing my most requested type of content video of all time, which is I'm going to be swatching all of my, you know, favorite. Take that word loosely because you're going to see it, it's a lot. Uh, uh, sparkly, wet looking toppers. A lot of these you can use them on their own. You don't necessarily have to use them as toppers, but I do think that a lot of these work great as toppers. I have tried to include, um, to not include the discontinued shades or products, but I don't know everything by heart. So I apologize if something isn't available anymore, especially the, the K Beauty ones, because I feel like those can be like in and out of stock kind of randomly. Um, also, I want to say if you watched my previous video where I swatched my sparkly wet looking toppers in palettes, that is kind of going to be the single shadow version of that. However, there's a twist. Uh, on that video, I included only my 100% neutral shades, you know, light champagne, slightly gold, slightly silver toppers. Here I have some that are a bit more colorful, but that when you use those toppers are not going to turn your look into a colorful look, especially because a lot of these I will use on top top of a like I would just do like a matte all over my eyelids or a more like lackluster shimmer you know like a metallic or a satin shade all over and then I'm going to put one of these on top and when used like that a lot of the colorful shades here are not going to turn your look into a colorful look they will just add some dimension and sparkle so that's it uh, let's get started I wanted to start with these because I feel like these are the most unique kind of products here and they're all similar. You can't see these, but these are the Fenty, uh, what are these even called? Diamond Bombs. Uh, and these are the minis, I don't know if you can tell, but this is the mini size and I do, rec do recommend that if you intend of using these only as eyeshadows, that you get the mini size. Um, the, the full size one is actually quite big. Uh, and these are all kind of the same thing. These are the Makeup by Mario Ma Master Crystal Reflector. Uh, and they are both sold as like highlighter all over kind of products because they do have a very unique formula. They have these super, you know, fine uh, sparkle particles. I think you can see these are all like very similar. Oh, my camera and the focus. I don't know why my camera just hates me sometimes. Okay, most folks on my hand. That's fine. Um, yeah, so this is the Mario and... Okay, let me see if I can get it to focus. This is Mario in Quartz. This is Mario Bronzite. This is Fenty, Fenty Glow. This one might have been limited edition. And this is Fenty How Many Carrots. And I think you can see that they are very similar. They have these... I don't even know. It's this like slightly squishy formula that has a ton of these micro sparkles, like super fine sparkles that I feel this is the only formula here that I could use on my face as a highlighter and I wouldn't feel uncomfortable because even though they are super sparkly, as I said, it's a fine sparkle. These uh, I think work beautifully. Well, oh, they look beautifully, sorry. These I think look beautiful either on their own or as a topper. However, these all crease pre pretty terribly on me if I just put them on my bare eyelid. So I find myself using these as toppers, uh, especially on my inner corner, on my brown bone because they do have that super wet look uh, effect. Uh, and I also find myself using these mixed with other. So let's say I already have like a sparkly eyeshadow, I can go and use one of these on top. Uh, I especially like mixing both of them together uh, to add more dimension because they don't have like multicolored sparkles, they're just like one color of sparkle. Uh, and because the sparkle is smaller, I find that if I put these on top of another sparkly shadow that is that has like bigger sparkles, it ends up adding more dimension because you have bigger and smaller particles. Um, so yeah, I find these super versatile. Uh, I like having them, but I don't think you need to have them all, you know. Probably I would just have uh, whatever is cheapest. Uh, I don't know, these minis I got like on sets, I didn't buy them individually, but I would probably just get um, one of these, whatever is the cheapest ones. So I'm going to start with um, the white ones uh, first. Uh, First, I'm going to start with the Fenty How Many Carrots. I don't see much of a difference between, uh, as I said, this one and the, and the Mario one. 
but this is like probably the closest that I can get on my eyes to look like a night gloss and I think you can see right it's just so sparkly I really wish that it, it didn't crease so like it creases terribly and it creases almost immediately on me even with uh, an eyeshadow primer and this is Mario Quartz I think you can see they are very similar maybe the Mario one is a tiny bit bigger the sparkles Now I'm going to do Fenty Glow. This one has a bit more of a base in it, I think you can see. And now Mario Bronzite. Fenty Glow looks a bit more rosy, the, the base color, while Mario Bronzite really doesn't have a base, I think you can see. It's just sheer bronzy sparkles. Now I'm going to move on to Half Magic Glitter Puck, and this is another one that doesn't look great on my eyelids on its own. Now for a different reason. Um, this one has, uh, the sparkle particle is bigger. And I find that when I put it on there on its own on my eyelids, you can kind of see the sparkles when the light isn't hitting it directly. So I don't know, it, I, I don't like the way that looks. Uh, but when I use it as a topper, I don't have that issue. It's like the... Um, it's like a matte sparkle when the light isn't hitting it. I don't know if I will be able to show you. But yeah, the sparkle, the sparkle particle is bigger. Um, yeah, I can see it on my finger, but I don't think I can show you in the camera. But yeah, this one for me, it's also like it's strictly a topper shade. Now I'm going to do the ColourPop ones. And before I get into it, I just want to say something because you don't necessarily have to use a, an eyeshadow that is fully uh, uh, transparent in order for it to work as a topper, right? You can, you can pretty much layer any shimmer you want to create a different effect. So a lot of the ColourPop shades, I think, work great as toppers, even if they are not uh, full on sheer, but I, I chose the, the more sheer topper like ones uh, for this video. But there's a color pop, color pop has a lot of sparkly shades that don't that are the ultra glitter formula that do have a base, but that will also work really well as toppers. You know, something like a little quirky, a uh, cosmic charge, those shades have a deeper base and they work great as one and ones, but you can also put them on top of other shadows to just add some sparkle. Um, so first here we have Ladybird. I feel like Ladybird is a super underrated uh, shade because everyone talks about Ritz, which I am going to be swatching, uh, but Ladybird is like Ritz without that tan base. Look at that, so pretty. Then I'm gonna do Frog. Frog has like pink and silver sparkles. I'm trying to see if I can see any other colors in it. Yeah, maybe some blue. Mine is a little bit dry. It's time to add, uh, add some drooling to it. This is Frog. And yeah, and I, if you don't know, um, the ColourPop Super Shocks um, shadows, they dry out. And I have tried probably every single method out there to revive these. And the one that has worked the best by far for me is adding some drops of um, Duraline, Duraline, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's Inglot, Duraline, or du Duraline, which is a liquid that is supposed for you to mix in with like uh, liners and like revive liners, but it, re it revives pretty much anything. And that one was by far my favorite method for reviving the, the Super Shock shadows. And then lastly, I'm gonna do uh, Ritz. Ritz. 
Ritz does have that warm tan base. Also works really well as a one and done shade if you are fair like me. And since this is Ritz, I'm gonna do Space Cowboy next just because it's very similar. Okay, this is a Space Cowboy. I depotted mine. It does come in a, you know, like in a packaging like, uh, like this, but I depotted mine um, because I wanted to have it as a single and that is magnetic. So if you depot yours, um, you can just pop it in the pan because the, the pan itself is magnetic. Okay, so this is a Space Cowboy. I do prefer Space Cowboy a teeny tiny bit over Ritz. And I think you can see here, right? The way that they shine is slightly different, uh, but I like Ritz as well. So I'm not saying that you need Space Cowboy instead of Ritz. If you have a red Ritz, I think you're gonna be very happy with it. You don't need, you don't necessarily need Space Cowboy. I think I can fit one more in this arm. This is the Shine Fix Eyes in the shade 02. Um, oh, I have no idea what's written in here. It's Korean, I think. And I have a few of these, and this is the only one that I consider to be more of a sparkly topper, but it is definitely more gold than the other shades that I've swatched so far. I think you can see it's much warmer. I have these more Moira shadows and two of these are definitely more colorful. Uh, but as I said, I think that as toppers, these are not gonna turn your look into a green look or a blue look. They will just add a little bit of a green sparkle or a blue sparkle and just add dimension to an eye look. So the first one here is Infinity. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the Lucent Cream Shadow. Uh, and the first shade is Infinity. And this one is the, the most neutral of them all. Uh, I do think that this one, when I use it on its own, I have to be a little bit careful because it tend to pull very silver. Um, but it, as a topper, uh, I feel like it really just adds that super glossy, wet looking sparkle. But as you can see, it definitely has a taupe base. Then the other one that I like is Jupiter. And this, this one, I feel like you can use it as a one and done. You don't necessarily have to use these ones as toppers. Uh, and this one has like a slightly warm purple base with blue sparkles that shift uh, purple. But again, if you add this one as a topper, you're not gonna get much color from it. And the last one is Saturn. This one has like a warm base with green sparkles. And I think this one is definitely the most colorful of them all. But still, I just think that if you tap this on top of a brown, it's not necessarily going to turn your look into a green look. Then I have these two from Phytosurgeons. Uh, I have Fractal Freesia Freeze, Freeze, and Lunar Light Wave. Uh, they're very similar. Although this one pulls more pink and Lunar Light Wave pulls a little bit more blue. Uh, and this formula, it's one of those that I use whenever I go into the office or whenever I need my makeup to last a really long time because these are budge proof. I don't know what's in the Phytosurgeons formula. These are a little bit hard to pick up. I don't know what's in this formula because it is super unique. It's like super uh, hard pressed. I just scooped them out with my nail because I didn't want to have to be here for hours. So this is Fractal Freesia. Wow, this is a horrible swatch. I'm going to clean it up. And it has like a pink undertone to it. It's such a unique sparkle that I really feel like my camera doesn't do it justice. Okay, I think it's better. It has a really unique sparkle, like it looks really sparkly on the eyes, but I feel like my camera, like the cameras in general, like don't do them justice. At least I was never able to like fully capture the sparkle of this formula. Uh, and the other one is Lunar Light Wave. I just took a chunk out because it's going to make my life easier. This one does have a little bit of a deeper base.
Well, I did. So yeah, this one is Fractal Frigia and this is Lunar Light Wave. Oh, my camera doesn't want to focus. Okay, now I have these bodyography ones. Uh, these ones, I use them really mostly as toppers. Uh, uh, we have Sparkler, Stratus, and Bubbly. So Stratus, Stratus is the most pinky of them all. This is a Stratus. I think you can see it has a finer sparkle. Then we have a Sparkler, which is kind of like an in-between. It's more neutral, almost like a taupe. Uh, I would say this one is more gold compared to, uh, what is it, Stratus. But when you see Bubbly, Bubbly is truly the gold one. So this is Sparkler. And this is bubbly, which is definitely the most gold. I think you can see. This one ends, ends up looking quite neutral and this one is the most cool tone. And these all have a, like a finer, smaller particle size for the sparkle. I have these two from this Korean brand called Bia. It's B-B-A, sorry, B-B-I-A. I don't know how to pronounce this brand. Let me see if I can focus, okay. Um, and these are the Jewel Shadow uh, in 06 and 07. I love these shadows, I have a bunch of them, but these are definitely the most topper-like ones. But they have like some brown ones that are also really pretty. They're like a creamy formula, like squishy. Oh my God, look at that. This one is 06. And these you can take them out of the of the of the container and just pop it in a palette. And this one is 07. Mine came broken, but you can just like squish them back together, you know? It's one of those formulas. This one is a little bit deeper. Okay, now I have a, a bunch of random uh, one shades, like I just have one shade from each brand. Uh, this is Charlotte Tilbury um, Hypnotic Pop Shot in Diamond Eyes. Um, I don't know if this was limited edition or not, uh, but yeah, this one is beautiful. I don't think it's really fully worth the, the price tag. Um, as you can see, you can get a lot of you know similar shades like this for cheaper, but it is truly beautiful and that packaging really is 10 out of 10 with the little with these little crystals. It's so beautiful. So yeah, diamond eyes pulls a little bit gold on me. I think you can see. I really wish she came out with something taupe, like the the sparkly shade that she has in the What's it called? Eyes to Mesmerize uh, Quad. I would love that. Um, then we have this one from Holika Holika. This is Moonshine. I don't know exactly what is the name of this shadow. Uh, the shade itself is Moonshine, but I don't know like the, the name of the formula because she has a because they have a bunch of of shades in this packaging. Um, if I can find out, I'll link it down below. I'll try to link these uh, Korean shadows because I know that they can be hard to find. But most of these, I got them on Yes Style or Stylevana. So this one is Moonshine. I think you can see this one is very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury one, but it does have a bit of a, a more, like, I don't know what to call it, like a little bit more of a rosy undertone. I can really see it on my finger. I think you can see, right? The Charlotte Tilbury one looks much more gold compared to the Holika Holika one. Oh, this camera doesn't want to focus ever on where, what it's supposed to. But it does have a gold sparkle. Uh, maybe with a little bit of pink. I don't know, it's hard to see. This one definitely has more dimension than the Charlotte Tilbury one. This one is the Misha Dewy Glossy Eyes and Honey Roast. I love this shade. 
I think you can see there's quite a dip going on, although this is like a very creamy, squishy formula, so I haven't used it that much. It just kind of moves around very easily. Uh, and this one is also like a gold. This one looks beautiful on its own or as a topper. It just really adds that glossy uh, veil. I think you can see it's, it's much more sheer than the other ones. I think you can see here. Still quite beautiful. Then we have this one from Innisfree. This is like their glitter sparkle form formula in the shade number two. Uh, I accidentally removed the backing of it, so I don't know exactly the name of the of the formula, but I know it's like the glitter single shadow or sparkle single shadow in the shade number two. I have other shades from this line, but number two is by far my favorite. Again, it's in the same vein as Honey Roast. Just kind of like a slightly gold wet looking topper. Mine has a little bit of hard pan, but I don't have any problems, you know, picking up the, the shadow. Um, this is Romand, what is it called? I know that this is shade number one, uh, but I, I don't know the name, again, the name of like the formula. They have four shades in this formula. They are all beautiful, but this one is the most neutral one. Uh, the other ones are kind of similar to the, to the Moira ones. Like they have a green one, they have a blue one, and they have one that's like more white. This one is like slightly rosy compared to the other ones. Um, and it has just like multicolored sparkles. I really like the packaging on that one. It's really pretty. Oh, look at that. Stunning. So as I said, this one is shade number one. Okay, this one is the Maison, Maison, I don't know, Visualistic Shadow in the shade Personal Champagne. And this one has like, ah, multicolored sparkles, like green, pink, champagne, gold. It's really, really pretty. This one I find that sometimes when I layer it on top of something, it can look a bit dry, but not always. I haven't fully figured out what's the issue. Um, so I tend to just use this either on my bare eyelids or on top of like a phytosurgeon's uh, shadow, like the, the, the more matte ones that they have that are not sparkly. Uh, it's so beautiful. Then I have this one from Glam Shop. This is like their cream eyeshadow in the shade Cappuccino. This one also tends to dry out like the the the, the ColourPop Super Shock shadows, but like this one dries out very fast. Uh, and I, again, I also found that uh, the drilling method works really well for this. Okay, I should have added some drilling because it is so dry. I think you can see it. I can't even like spread it out. Uh, I, I the thing is like I have to add a drop overnight and then let it sit and then in the morning it's good to go so yeah i don't know i think you can kind of see here if i put drilling now it's not going to work it needs to sit in there for a while uh, but this formula is similar to the phytosurgeons in the sense that once it's on your skin it doesn't budge and i think that's why it dries out so fast um it, it just doesn't move i think you can see it's like <laughs> it's like stuck there now even on my finger this is the Flower Beauty Chrome Crush Press Pigment in the shade um, Quartz. And this is like a mix of pink and champagne sparkles. Then I have a few that I'm not sure if they're available or not. This is the Ota Beauty Bouncy Eyeshadow in the shade Buttercream. And I think you can see, oh my god, look at that. It's so sparkly. It's like silver and pink sparkles and it is like a creamy formula, like, like it's a squishy. I think you can see, right, there's a dip there because it is kind of squishy. So if you don't like that formula, you will not like this one. And this one I find that it works better if I have like a glitter glue or something to for it to stick down to because it doesn't really want to stick down on like on top of another eyeshadow if it's not a little bit sticky. You need it needs something to grip onto. 
And the other one, which is also one of my favorites, is the Ulta Beauty Lustrous Foil Eyeshadow in Silver Leaf. They have a bunch of colors of these. I think that Silver Leaf was not discontinued, but some of the other ones were. And I feel like this, this was probably like one of my first sparkly eyeshadows that I was like, oh, wait a second. Is this like something like this is possible? Oh, you're going to see. It's so beautiful. It is not the most user friendly because you gotta open the little. Uh, it's 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 like kind of loose in there, and you have to keep the the little plastic thing so it doesn't explode everywhere. But look at that. So beautiful. Um, I think they have rose gold leaf too, but then they, it's not gonna be silver. It's gonna be a different uh, color. And then the last one that again I don't know if it's available or not. This is the NYX. Um, what's it called? Fowl Play Cream Eyeshadow. NYX has this whole Fowl Play line that is like loose pigments and pressed pig and like pigments in like little containers like this. And that is just so beautiful. They're all like very sparkly. Um, this one in the shade Beauty Bus is my favorite for like a neutral look. And it has kind of like that Rowan shadow consistency. It's like this PC sparkle that is creamy. But I think it's a little more even than the Rowan Shadows because the Rowan Shadows can be a little patchy. Like, I, I don't think that the Rowan Shadows is spread as easily as that one. Okay, now we're gonna get into the single eyeshadows, uh, and now it's where we're gonna get into a little bit more color. Uh, I wanna start with this palette here because these are my Misha like glitter prism eyeshadows that I depotted into this magnetic palette because I had a bunch of them, and they do come like in a container like this. But because I had so many, I figured that if I depotted them, I was gonna get more use out of them, and I really do like having them all together. Um, so all of these ones here are the, the Misha glitter prisms. Uh, these ones here are not and these six here are they are Misha shadows, but they're not the glitter prism line So just like this rectangle here and these two here on top I don't know if all of these are available I am gonna link down below my I have a post on Instagram from years ago at this point where I swatched all of these but they are all very sparkly and on the sheer side uh, I'm gonna swatch just two of them because I think are the two most popular ones uh, just to kind of give you an idea, but they're really, really pretty. Uh, it's these two ones here. This uh, more green one is Garden Prism, and then the other one is Bloho Prism. Yeah. And these are not magnetic. I had to put a, a, a magnet on the back. So let me start with Bloho. They do have a finer spar sparkle particle. It's not going to be super big and chunky but it's still gonna give you that wet effect. And they are also a bit drier than other uh, formulas. So this is Blue Hole, and then this is Garden Prism, which is a bit more green. My favorite one is Cookie Prism, but I don't think it's available anymore, but I'm gonna swatch it just in case. And this one has more pigments to it. Now I wanna do these ones from a professional. Uh, a lot of these are like topper shadows, but the ones that I've been using the most now are these two here. This one I think is Dreamweaver. Uh, these were sent in PR to me. These are the only things here that were sent in PR. Uh, yeah, this is Dreamweaver. And the other one is Butterfly Effect. And they're not full on sheer. They do have a little bit of a base. But they have like these multicolored sparkles that on top of a brown will really just add dimension and add to the, the glossy effect. So this one I think you can see has like purple, blue, pink, green sparkles. And it does have a shift to purple. And the other one is butterfly effect. And this one pulls a bit more periwinkle, I think. And it has a little bit of a deeper base, but still quite sheer.
Now, one of the most underrated products, this is Dandelions. This is a Figs highlighter. I believe they have four highlighters in this formula, which is like the sparkle formula. Uh, and I love them all as eyeshadow toppers, but my favorite one is this one, which is Gorgon. These do need something sticky for them to hold down to and really work its magic. So like my arm, I've been washing it, so it's not sticking down very well, but it is a very, very sparkly formula. And now I'm gonna move on to this palette where I have the single shadows. Oh, this one I already swatched. Uh, okay, so at the top here, I have some Terra Moon shades. Um, this one is, Lightspeed, yeah, Lightspeed, Celestial Petal, and Meteor Meteorite. I forgot to say in the intro that like every iridescent is a great topper, and I didn't want to go into the iridescents because I already talked about all of them on my other video, uh, but this is the one that I didn't include on that video, and it's actually the one that I use the most as a topper, um, and it's also pretty neutral. So Lightspeed, if you put it on top of a brown, it's not gonna look like a yellow shadow, it's really just gonna add these purple, pinky purple sparkles. I think you can see, right? It does have a yellow base, but if you just put it on top of a brown, the yellow kind of disappears. And the same thing happens with Celestial Petal. It does have a little bit of a pink base, but on top of a brown, it's just gonna look like blue sparkles. And again, you can put this on top of any color, right? I'm just saying brown because I feel that when we talk about sparkly, wet looking toppers, people usually think about neutral shadows. And then the last one is Meteorite, which pulls a bit more gold. Then I have this one here from Sample Beauty, which I think it's a pretty underrated formula as well. I don't think I've seen anyone else talk about their single shadows. I kind of got them on a whim uh, a while ago on Beauty Bay website. And this shade sp specifically is Cobweb, and it's a really pretty, more cool tone leaning uh, topper shade. Oh, look at that. It's so beautiful. It's similar to Infinity uh, from Moira. Then I have two from Glam Shop. The first one is Star. This is like Tuber Glow shade. And this one is very, very neutral. And the other one is Paws We, no, sorry, po Posipka. This one has like multicolored, like gold, blue, orange sparkles. It's really pretty. Also really unique to my collection. Now here I have my Copacetic Cosmetics Flakies uh, and these uh, these guys here and this is for me a topper formula Copacetic Cosmetics does say that you can put a glitter glue down and I know that some people like using them like th like this But personally, I don't like that because I feel that it looks quite textured on my eyelids And it's not something that I think is super flattering My favorite way of applying them and the only way that I apply them is on top of another eyeshadow So I'll either have a mat all over my eyes uh, I'm sorry, my cat is up to no good. Anyway, as I was saying, I will either have like a mat all over my eyes or I will have like a whole like eye look with a more like satin shimmer or more like luster shimmer. And then I'll get one of these flakies and rub on top of that eyeshadow so that when the so that the, the flakies kind of break apart as I rub it. If it is a sticky, they don't break apart. They just stick down and just stay there. And that's what that's why I don't use them on their own. Um, These are just some of my favorite shades, but I have a big palette full with my copacetic flakies because I really, really like them as toppers. Um, so the first one here is Cake Cutting, and it is the most neutral of them all. Because I've been washing my arms a million times, I'm hoping that I'll be able to give you guys a realistic swatch on how they end up looking on my eyes. So this is like your silver, uh, silver white flaky. I think you can see, it's a more like species sparkle. 
Then I'm gonna do pineapple anise, which is a little bit warmer. These are super hard to swatch and to like really show you how they look like. Okay, I think you can see now. This is pineapple anise, which is a little warmer. Then we have how wood, which is one of my favorites to use on top of a matte brown. I would just put a matte brown all over and then I will rub this one on top and I, I just love that look. My cat just wants to do something. He just wants to destroy something today. He's testing me. So yeah, you might end up seeing him today. He makes his way over. This is not my best watch, but I think you can see the color. This is how wood. It's like rude, but with a W. Then this one is Yellow Garden. This one is like a copper with green sparkles. It's such a pretty shade. They kind of fluff everywhere. And then the last one that I have here is Life's a Hoot. This one I know for sure came in a quad, but a lot of the times they sell the shades individually. Uh, but this one, the last time I checked, was not sold individually, but it's from the Owl Quad, which has a lot of like more neutral uh, flakies. It's a really pretty quad, but this one is my favorite shade from that quad. Okay, I was trying to give you an even swatch, but I don't think I can do it with my arm because it's so dry. But yeah, this is Life's a Hoot. Now I have these Cleona shades and a lot of the glitter multi-chromes make great toppers. This is just a selection of the ones that I use the most actually as toppers and not on their own. So the first one here is Translucency, which is like a pinky topper. Then this one is Chandelier, which is more green. Then probably one of my favorites is carving. Carving does have a little bit of a base. Oh, look at that, so beautiful. And the last one that I have here is uh, Adornment, which is from their newer uh, uh, expansion. This one kind of has a pink base with these gold sparkles that aren't super warm. Then I have one shade from Touch of Glam. Touch of Glam, especially the Color Mimoti series part two, I feel like lots of those shades make great toppers, but it is by far the ones that I use the most. This is a Spring Into Action. It has like blue, pink, and silver sparkles, and it's also one of the most uh, Sheer ones. Oh, I got way too much. This formula is really easy to go overboard. It's so beautiful. And then the last one I want to fit in here. This shade, actually, I use it more on its own as like a one and done shade than as a topper. But I feel like I have to talk about it. This is Luxie Angel Wings. And this is like one of the, my most used single eyeshadows. Whenever I travel, I bring this with me. Because even though it is a neutral, it is still super, super special. And it works beautifully as a topper. But I also think that it works great as a one and done shade. Because it does have a little bit of a base.
Okay, hopefully this is the last time I'm gonna wash my arms. So I'm gonna do the bottom row here. Uh, this one here is the Vina, um, what's it called? Pancake Bubbles? Yeah, Pancake Bubbles. Then we have three from Copacetic and then we have two here at the end from Sephora. So Pancake Bubbles is one of those that you can use it on its own, um, but I also think it works great as a topper. Oh, look at that, so beautiful. It's like green, but kind of a neutral green. Uh, then from Copacetic, we have this formula from Copacetic, which is like the, the fairy lights formula. And these three shades here are by far my favorites. These are all like different versions of the same eyeshadow. So we have Miss You, Best Buds, and Text Me. And they all have green, pink, and silver sparkles but they have it at different ratios so in the end they end up giving different effects so i'm gonna start with miss you which i think you can see miss you i don't know i think it has more green than pink but it that but like the pink is very visible and the base is pretty transparent i don't see any base then we have best buds which is probably my favorite it's just such a unique shadow Again, it has the pink and the green sparkles, but it ends up having a different effect. And I think you can see the next to um, Miss You, it just looks different. It has a bit of a peachy pink base. This shade also on its own look, looks beautiful. If you have a lighter skin tone like me, this is just gonna look like your eyelids are wet. And then the last one is Text Me. This one looks more pink on my finger, but it has like a green base and has a green shift. So yeah, they're all different even though they all have a green, pink, and silver sparkles. Oh, I actually just saw that I skipped the whole row. So I have actually more shadows to swatch. Anyway, um, these are two from Sephora, and this is like the marbled formula from Sephora. Sephora has a very inconsistent naming of their formulas. Uh, I have other shades in this formula, which is like the, what is it called? It's like the cream formula from Sephora, but only these two shades and one more are like ultra sparkly. Uh, so I have shade 29. 31 and 33. 33 I did not include here because it has a much more visible rose gold base. So I feel like that one works better as a, sh a shadow on its own rather than as a topper. These two are the ones that I use the most as toppers. So 29 is the lightest one. And it has like a white gold tone to it. And then 31 is a bit more bronzy. These are shadows that I also tend to travel with because they're just so easy. And then the last ones that I skipped uh, are these ones here, which are from Pretty For Your Face. Pretty For Your Face has a lot of shadows that work as toppers, but I think these are the ones that I use the most as like a topper on top of another eyeshadow. Um, so the first one here is Cosmos and it looks purple on the pan uh, and it is one of those super flaky ones So you have to be careful with it uh, I'm just trying to scrape the excess on the edge of the pan uh, but this one has like This silver gold kind of Sparkle it's like a mix of gold and silver white sparkles And then the other ones are all like more white leaning uh, this one here is Winnie. Then uh, we have red light, green light. It's a bit more cool toned. And then the last one is Tesseract. And this one is almost like a gold nude. It's a really unique tone. 
This one looks beautiful on top of like a gray, a taupe kind of shade because it's almost like a neutral gold and I think you can see it. This is it. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know down below what is your favorite topper because I would like to know, you know, what's out there that I haven't experimented yet. Um, and I'll see you on my next one. Bye bye.